All right, in this example, I'm going to look at a case where uh, doing a parallel map actually makes things faster, uh, you know, across the pool. And I just really want to emphasize that you should always be measuring this. Don't assume things are going to be faster. Um, you know, even when I'm doing this demo, everything works out cleanly, and A, it looks like there's this improvement. Uh, but honestly, as I was prepping for this uh, demonstration, uh, I tried a few different examples where I thought the parallel map was going to be faster and it actually ended up being slower, right? So just because this is probably going to go smoothly now, uh, don't always assume that this has some good speed up. Actually take measurements and be informed. And so the example where I do where it actually makes things faster is where we're downloading a bunch of uh, pages from a website in parallel. And, and of course, we've talked before this semester about uh, respecting robots.txt and the back offs and all that. And um, in general, you'll have to think about that. Uh, this is on my site, so we aren't going to worry too much about it. Um, but of course, if you're downloading things in parallel from a site that puts a lot more load um, on it than it usually would. So it's okay here, but kind of be a little careful on other people's sites. Um, so we have a page here on 1.html, on 2.html. Um, it goes up to 17.html. Uh, there is no 18.html. And uh, what I want to do is I want to download all of these uh, 17, actually I guess there's 18 pages because it starts at zero. I want to download these 18 par uh, uh, pages uh, in parallel because I'll be able to do that a little bit faster than if I do one at a time. And, um, and so I've already done a little bit of coding here. I've written this fetch function where I may pass in the index like 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, I am going to take this base URL and do the format to plug the index um, right here before .html. And, um, and then I'm doing a request.get for that uh, specific URL, uh, checking out into a 404, um, and then finally returning that text, right? So when I fetch a page zero, um, I get this here, I can see it's node zero. If I fetch page one, um, I get a different page. And, um, and we want to fetch all 18, all 18 pages. And, um, and so one way I can do that is with map, right? I can uh, you know, pass in my function reference and, uh, and then my pages, right? So I could have a list of pages, something like this, my page zero, one, two. Um, you know, the simpler way for me to do that is just say I want to range. Uh, I'm going from zero to 17, so, uh, but the end is exclusive, so I can say that. And then, and then the function reference is just fetch, right? So each number from zero to 17 will get passed to fetch. And, um, and I'm going to be generating a list of all the results, right? So maybe I can do that pages equals that, and then, and then I'll just take a peek at my pages. And, uh, and that'll take a moment to run. And, uh, and this is just the regular map, so that's not running in parallel. And I get all of them. And, um, and so the important thing, right, is how long did that take? Because that's what we want to improve by doing things in parallel. So I'm going to check the time before, and I'm going to check the time afterwards. And when I'm all done, I'm going to see, well, how long did that take uh, in seconds? Okay, so two and a half seconds, not a long time, but if there are more pages, that might be um, a little bit more onerous, uh, or maybe there's thousands of pages. Um, and so let me let me do this with the parallel map as before, right? So I'm gonna, down here, I'm gonna say uh, with pool as P, um, I can do this same thing right here. And um, the difference being is that I don't have to convert it to a list anymore. It's automatically gonna do that. And instead of calling the regular map function, I'm going to call my pool, uh, pool.map. And, um, and you know what, I should, I should kind of time how long this takes, um, takes as well, just like I did before. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and let's see how long that takes. And, um, and it's, it's pretty similar, right? And I'm actually a little surprised it's faster. Uh, the reason I'm surprised, I wonder if I just run this again, maybe I got unlucky that time. Uh, okay. So, so they're kind of similar. Um, the reason that it's not more different is because I'm creating only one extra process to help me with this. And, um, and so if I create, say, like two extra processes, uh, that should be a little bit faster. Three, it should be a little faster still. Uh, four processes. Right, so when, um, when these processes are doing these requests, Mostly they're just spending time waiting, right? The CPU isn't, isn't that busy. So it's great if I can have more processes that kind of kick off these requests and then they're waiting 
And even though I have one core on this virtual ma machine CPU, um, I can have these multiple things doing stuff at the same time. Um, and of, of course, I should uh, I should check that I actually have have multiple pages. Now, now notice going from one uh, process to four processes doesn't make me um, doesn't make me four times faster, right? I mean, I'm I'm over twice as fast, but not four times faster. And that's because there's overheads, right? I mean, it takes time to start the new processes. It takes time to transfer data to the processes and back, right? It's transferring those pages back to me. And, and of course, right, I mean, there's a limit to the network uh, uh, bandwidth that I can use, right? If I, if I had a million processes, well, then I'm, I'm not really uh, uh, limited in terms of how many requests I could do at a time. I'm limited in terms of well, how much data can I and I transfer, right? So you always want to think about that. See, like, well, what kind of a performance improvement do I get as I have more and more uh, processes helping me um, in the pool?